Okay, so it's actually pouring outside while I'm making this video. So some people may think, you know, that I'm taking a shower. That's not the case. So let's go ahead and continue. This is Isaiah chapter 10, verse 21. A remnant will return. A remnant of Jacob will return to the mighty Yahweh. Okay? Because Yahweh is the mighty God. Okay? This is just a title. And as we know, the name of Yahweh is his sacred name. So, it says, Though your people be like the sand by the sea, Yashara, only a remnant will return. Why is that? Well, because some people will have a problem with the name of the Most High Yahweh, for instance. Some people may say, well, how is Yahweh the sacred name? Because Yahweh has a meaning. We went over it in the first part of this video. Okay? Yahweh means exactly what he said he will do. He foretold the former things long ago. Okay? Long ago. And suddenly he acted and it came to pass. So only a remnant will return to their God. Destruction has been decreed overwhelming and righteous Yahweh, Yahweh Almighty will carry out the destruction decreed upon the whole land Isaiah chapter 50 verse 2 when I came why was there no one when I called why was there no one to answer was my arm too short to deliver do I lack the strength to rescue you by a mere rebuke, I dry up the sea. I turn rivers into a desert. Their fish rot for lack of water and die of thirst. And this is the key point here in this verse. Okay? Yahweh says that their fish rot for lack of water and die of thirst. Who are their fish? It's talking about these religious minded people their followers, all of those who have been manipulated, brainwashed into believing lies. Religion is the waterless pit. Let's go ahead and show you. Amos chapter 4 verse 2. The sovereign Yahweh has sworn by his holiness, the time will surely come, which has already happened, when you will be taken away with hooks. The last of you with fish hooks. You see that? The last of you with fish hooks. What do you think? There are so many so called Jesus worshipers. You see that? His followers. There's something fishy here. Why is that? Well, because they are believing in lies. They have been pulled into the dragnet of the craftsman, of the blacksmith, of the oppressor. Let's go ahead and show you that. In Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 15, the wicked foe pulls all of them up with hooks. Who is the wicked foe? These people who created the religions. They are the craftsmen that you read about. They are the blacksmith that forges a weapon fit for its work. So the wicked foe pulls all of them up with hooks. He catches them in his net. He gathers them up in his drag net. And so he rejoices and is glad. Remember? The craftsman, he makes his idol. He worships it. He loses sleep, right? He bows down to it. He gives it his strength. Therefore, he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his drag net. This is a precept to the scripture in Isaiah, which you can read for yourself, that talks about the craftsman who makes an idol, you know? This is what it's talking about. He prays to it. It says, for by his net, he lives in luxury and enjoys the choicest food. So you see why our people, they have to stop eating from a begrudging host. They have been captured by their hooks. Now, you have to understand something. The Most High Yahweh, 
he tries to warn the people over and over with his words that this Jesus Christ worship is false. What do they tell you? So go be a fisher of men, right? But Yahweh condemns that. These people are trying to set you up. They want you to go be a fisher of men. The word of the Most High Yahweh tells you. So watch out for these people who are trying to drag you with their fishing hooks. Let's go ahead and show you another scripture, right? That 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 is warning us about this Jebus Geist madness. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult. Keep that word in mind, all right? It's not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you may have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. You see, I bring this scripture out because they say no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of men, who is their Jebus Geis, as we know it. You see that? So Yahweh was already warning us here that it is not up in heaven. Okay, so watch yourself very carefully. Do not become corrupt because people are going to tell you that some men went up into heaven to go get the word. And that's a lie. The next scripture. Nor is it beyond the sea. So that you may have to ask, who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? I bring this scripture out again. Why? Because as we know it, the men who they call Jesus Geist, the only begotten Son of God, he walked on water. He made people believe in this miracle that he was the Son of God. So Yahweh was telling you that it's not beyond the sea. The word of Yahweh, where is it? No, the word of Yahweh is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. The word of Yahweh is in us, us who believe. For in his word we put our trust in, because in his name we are saved. Now let's go ahead and read from the book of Enoch, chapter 1, but this is the very last verse here, verse 9. We're going to read this here. Verse 9 says, And behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all, and to destroy all the ungodly, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness you see which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners are you ready have spoken against him you see that you see why the most high Yahweh says now what i am commanding you today is not too difficult for you but these people they make it too difficult that's the reason why the scripture says this here in Isaiah 57 and 12 I will expose your righteousness and your works and they will not benefit you furthermore when you cry out for help let your collection of idols save you the wind will carry all of them off a mere breath will blow them away but check this out us who trust in Yahweh's words right but whoever takes refuge in me will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain in other words they will be part of his holy congregation they will dwell on Mount Tiziah one they will be part of those who Yahweh leads besides quiet waters who Yahweh makes to lay down in green pastures right Mount Tiziah one okay remember the place of remembrance that's how Yahweh will be able to give us this ancient knowledge which we acquire through praising Yahweh. Not by sacrificing to no damn demons, not by worshiping no false gods, but by taking refuge in Yahweh. And as we know, Proverbs 18 and 10 says, the name of Yahweh is a fortified tower. The righteous runs to it and are safe. So we take refuge in his name and we put our hope, our trust in his words. We are not waiting for no man to come. Every day we get up, we praise Yahweh for another day, for another week, another month, another year he has given us. In his name, we are saved, always and forever. Okay? So again, these people, you know, they have spoken hard things against the words of the Most High. Let's go ahead and continue to read. Now, this is from the book of Enoch, 
This is chapter 104, and we're going to read from verse 10. And now, I know this mystery, that sinners will alter and pervert the words of righteousness in many ways, and will speak wicked words, right? As we talked about in a previous video, how these people, they mutter wicked things, and will speak wicked words and lie, and practice great deceits, and write books concerning their words. You see that part here? Let this part here marinate. Okay, so that you can understand when us, the brothers and sisters who honor Yahweh, when we tell you that the New Testament is a lie, when we tell you that Jeebus Geist is something that they created with their wicked imaginations, let this part here marinate. When you say, oh no, but the Gospels, what about the Gospels? What about Revelation? Look what it says here. And write books concerning their words. Let me tell you something here, all right? For those of you that have an eye to see this. These people who wrote the book of Revelation, a lot of their stuff, they get it from the book of Enoch. They just basically, you know, try to remix it in their own words. This is how they created that book, you know? This is what Yahweh says. Verse 11, but when they write down truthfully all my words in their language, we already spoke about that pure language, right? which everybody will be shoulder to shoulder praising Yahweh, which we already talked about. That is when Yahweh purified the lips of his people, that they may all call on the name of Yahweh with one consent, okay? That is the pure language. So this is what it means here. When they write down truthfully all my words, where are we going to write it down at? In our hearts. That's the new covenant, okay? His laws will be written in our hearts in that pure language. So it says, when they do that, and do not change or minish off from my words, but write them all down, truthfully, all that I first testified concerning them. Why? Because the Most High Yahweh told you that there's nothing new under the sun. He told you that these people were gonna start to worship these new strange gods, gods that they nor their ancestors have known, okay? So all that Yahweh first testified concerning his people. Then, I know another mystery, that books will be given to the righteous and to the wise to become a cause of joy. You see that? Books will be given to the righteous. This is what I'm trying to tell you. The book of Revelation was made from, you know, certain precepts and certain scriptures from the book of Enoch. Do you understand that? This is what they did. So this is why in the book of Revelation, there's a scripture that says the books will be open. What do you think they get that from? Okay? So again, then I know another mystery, that books will be given to the righteous and the wise to become a cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom. And to them shall the books be given. You see that? So this is why the Most High Yahweh has given us the spirit to read the book of Enoch, to read the forgotten books of Adam, to read, you know, Ecclesiasticus, to read Second Esdras, all these books which he first testified concerning us. He has given us the spirit to understand the true ancient knowledge, okay, the meaning to his words. Even though this whole world has been corrupted, but Yahweh's spirit, that light that's in us, this is how we are able to see through the darkness, okay? And to them shall the books be given, and they shall believe in them, and rejoice over them. So it doesn't matter if the people are saying, the book of Enoch is not true. Well, that's what you think. But to me, guess what? I believe in it, and I rejoice over it through the Spirit of Yahweh. And then all the righteous who have learned therefrom all the paths of uprightness be recompensed. What that means, that means that we're going to actually see the word of the Most High Yahweh come to pass. The things that we believe in, we're going to see them come to pass. That's us enjoying the fruits of our deeds, okay? And now let's read this here. This is from the book of Enoch, chapter 5, verse 4. But ye, ye have not been steadfast. Who? Talking about these religious-minded people. These people who are waiting for an only begotten Son of God to come out the sky and to save them, to bring them somewhere else. You see that? Why? Because they despise their mother when she's old. They don't want to be here on this earth. But ye, 
Ye have not been steadfast, nor done the commandments of Yahweh, but ye have turned away and spoken proud and hard words with your impure mouths against his greatness. O oh, ye hard-hearted, ye shall find no peace. You see that? So this is the reason why they are going to and fro like the raging sea, because they can't find no peace. That's the reason why they're fighting amongst each other, you know? And political views and religious matters. That's why we who serve the Most High Yahweh, we are not affiliated with any hate groups. We are not religious. We serve the Most High Yahweh freely through His Spirit in the midst of all these nations. That's what we do, proclaim His name. Jeremiah chapter 15, when your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Yahweh, the Most High. You see that? Again, that's what the Most High Yahweh means, that we will be recompensed for our labors. We will see the things that we believe in, the things that everybody else calls us crazy for believing in, we will see them come to pass. Yahweh is going to make it come to pass because these are His words that we believe in. They are not our conspiracies. They are not our thoughts. No. You see, these people, they try to use that against us. But no, your thoughts are not the most high thoughts. No, buddy. Because he reveals his thoughts to us. Remember that? Turn to me. Yahweh says that he will pour out his thoughts to us. So again, when Yahweh's words come to pass, we eat them. And we are glad when they come to pass. Because again, his words, that's our heart's delight. His name is our heart's desire. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 2. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. These who are religious, these who are quick to rush into evil, but the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. That's what these religious-minded people do. They're quick to go against, you know, anything that you try to tell them. And they say, oh no, it's just us being zealous. Well, Proverbs 13 and 3. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. You see that? Guard your lips. 